some more bushy hydroid with uh, eggs. We don't need a zoom. I know exactly what that is now. In other areas of the Pacific, have you seen this many egg cases? No. This is this frequency of the egg cases is higher than I'm used to. Certainly seen the egg cases other places, but this is definitely the highest I personally have ever seen. About how long does it take uh, for a Dumbo or just a cephalopod egg to hatch in the deep sea? What's its incubation time? We, for these, we have no idea. For um, some of, I forget the name of it, but the the type of octopus that they're, the Falcor 2 right now is diving on an octopus nursery off the coast of Costa Rica. And that type of octopus, I don't remember exactly what it is, but I want to say it's mul it's multiple years. So the gestation Quick, period there, is like two years plus or something like ridiculous like that. Wow. And those mama octopus are not eating the entire time. Correct. That is the current belief. Looks like another black coral, probably a small bathopathies. Thanks. Okay. There's uh, been a lot of work by Ambari out at, and, and Nautilus um, out at Davidson Seamount on another one of those octopus nurseries. Ooh, yeah, the really timing. famous one. Yeah. And like I said, I've, I've read the paper, but I don't remember the exact gestation time, but it's, it's outrageously long. What is, I don't know what this is yet. Can we take a look at that? Sure. Go ahead, there. Pushing it a little tighter for us. I have no idea. I got nothing. I'm logging this weird thing. Yeah, I'm totally stumped. Any chance of slurping this? Any clue what it could be no, like in a kind of I, I've got yeah. literally no idea. Looks like a kiwi. It kind of does. I was thinking it looks more like a type of excrement. I yeah, I can't I can't even get into the jars for us. Phylum. Move aside. Mysterious purple orb. We have a Go mysterious brown uh, orb. There, Do science have a particular jar they'd like us to put it in? Anything but one or two. Uh, okay, well. Seven. Can do. Copy. Uh, go away, don't. Okay. Somebody online says it's possibly a, a regular urchin. I could see that. Yeah. I'm going to say right about now, anybody's guess is pretty pretty good. Yep, it does look like at, a, yep, yeah. Yep. Looking at it from the, the, the side view, um, from the still camera, um, it does look more urchin-like. So great job to our, to Jason. I'm having some trouble getting the jars to rotate, so you might be getting it in jar five, but I am looking into it. <laughs> I'm having trouble getting out of the bungee. Looks like you've got your claw tucked in it. I do. Snaggletooth. How's that Atlanta doing? Fine. 
Atlanta is doing fine. Are you saying they're not rotating at all? I am not rotating at all. Are we, are you, before we slurp it, are we lined up enough that we think it'll actually get in a jar, or are we just gonna get it stuck in the, um, or lose it? Great. Everything is like super slow down here. It's cold. Oh, that's why. You got the suction on? What's happening? Negative. I don't have any suction turned on right now. Sorry, I was stealing all your flow. Try the jar now. Copy. There we go. Okay, let's leave it there. Yeah, they don't work too well at 900 PSI. That was a uh, <coughs> classic dumping flow. I don't know if it's a manipulator or have all the verts pinned or what. I love all the okay, fun gases online. Sit right in there. Ready when you are, Dan. 50%. Copy. Oh, IT4 is 50%. Roger. Oh. 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 <laughs> Go, uh, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> the entire starboard box <laughs> should be empty. Yep. Uh, can't get to starboard from here. Okay. The entire forward box is empty. What's that? <laughs> the yeah. entire forward box is empty too. Uh, yeah, you got it. Okay, toll trace fully out. Same thing happens when I vacuum in at home. Legos and other children's toys. Okay, you can turn <laughs> it off. Uh, it's off, T40. Okay, close yep. her up. Bloop. Definitely an urchin. Thank you, front row. And Brian, you were just saying earlier how much you love urchins, like sampling them, bringing them up. Luckily, it's really Leela's problem. <laughs> <laughs> One, three, nine. It's a legit technique there. <laughs> And grab. Where are we looking? We're not on the cliff yet. Copy that. Brian, we have a question about eDNA. Sure. It's a long one. So here we go. So let me see where I should start. Um, this person would like to know if there is any DNA sequencing of the samples that are that we have been collecting uh, that has already been done. And a generation ago, they assumed that genetic variability within the deep benthic species should be much lower than it actually is. For example, intertidal organisms 
because the abyssal organisms are adapted to much more constant environmental conditions. However, the first attempts to sequence abyssal genomes indicated the opposite was occurring. So I was wondering if that work is continuing and if some of the samples you are collecting will contribute to increasing our understanding of genetic adaptation uh, and evolu up, evolutionary processes in the deep sea benthos. Yeah, so the short answer is yes. We uh, generally subsample most of the, uh, oh, we subsample most here. of the um, things we collect get subsampled for some level of genetic come ID. Up, so along with the, um, along with create, doing the eDNA sampling, we're also the same people, the same partner, Steve Oskovich and Meredith Etheret, um, are working on building a genetic resource, a genetic reference library of deep sea corals and sponges. And there's a couple other groups, uh, the uh, Marine Genome Legacy Project at Northeastern. I forget what the Woods Hole Oceanographics has a similar um, deep sea genome Look up, system that's trying to sequence um, as many deep sea organisms as they can get their hands on as they have funding to do, trying to build reference databases for what the genetics out here look like. Um, and yes, absolutely, those those sequences will be available um, in some form or fashion for um, larger I questions of evolution um, and whatnot in the deep sea. Um, I don't know enough to Hope get into answering the question specifically about the amount of genetic variation down here. We do think that speciation, at least in the macrofauna, is less common here than it is in shallower water. Um, and we don't have a, a really good idea of why that is. One potential hypothesis is just the cold w weather. Um, the colder water probably reduces the mutation rate down here. Um, but there are several other st environmental stability uh, ideas and stuff that could also lead to um, reduced speciation. But so, that's yeah. at odds with the uh, level of biodiversity we see in the in fauna and meofauna. So it's kind of a paradox um, where we have these very old species that have persisted for extremely long periods of time, relatively unchanged in the fossil record. But we also see these really high diversity and extremely patchy communities simultaneously. Um, so it's a bit of a paradox of deep sea biodiversity. That was a beautiful answer. And hello, Moya. It's good to talk to you again. Uh, Moya from New Zealand. And I like your suggestion. It's a potato orchard. So to answer a question online, Hercules can go down to 4,000 meters, uh, but we also have a second ROV that is rated to 6,000 meters, and that is Little Herc. Little Herc and Argus are currently on board, even though they're not in use, um, for this current dive, or any dive so far. Little Hercules has a very sweet spot in my heart. It was my first ROV cruise ever, was with Little Hercules in 2010. Little Hercules is that old? Little Hercules is way older than that. Wow. I don't remember how old Little Hercules is, but it was an older vehicle when we were using it. Deep Discoverer was still being built for NOAA. It was behind schedule, so we borrowed um, Little Hercules from then the Institute for Exploration, which is um, now morphed into OET. Um, for a couple of years on board Okeanos Explorer. We use Little Herc. So interesting. Little Herc's, I guess, claim to fame is it, I believe it found PT-109, John, President John F. Kennedy's um, PT boat from World War II. Whoa. I think I come down to five there. That was some more bioturbation. Yep, getting some, some speeding traces there. So, Brian, you were on board when they discovered the shipwreck, Actually, the PT. Which shipwreck? 
uh, John F. Kennedy's? Oh, no, 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 no. That was, that was uh, much longer before. Um, I don't remember when that was, when, when Bob Ballard found, found it. Let me try it, see if it runs away here. No, I, I have found, been on board and we found a few shipwrecks, but nothing super, super famous. Were a lot of those shipwrecks from the Gulf of Mexico? Several of them, yeah. You said it's real easy to find shipwrecks there over there. A lot, yeah. I think the coolest shipwreck I was ever on board for finding was uh, the Makasu Maru, which was a, a Japanese Imperial Navy um, dis World War One destroyer that was reserviced, uh, repurposed in World War Two, as a um, a water supply tanker. So it had been a destroyer in World War One and became a tanker in World War Two, and it was sunk um, by U.S. forces by a U.S. submarine, I believe, the Triton. Um, just a couple miles south of Wake Island. We were actually looking for a different Japanese warship, um, the Hayate, um, that was the first Japanese surface vessel sunk by US forces in World War II. And we found the shipwreck, but it wasn't the ship we were looking for. It was a different Japanese ship. I think the coolest shipwreck I ever worked on was the Japanese midget sub that was sunk sneaking into Pearl Harbor on Pearl Harbor, on the initial Pearl Harbor attack. Wow. Um, that's a really, really cool wreck to work on. So that was actually there during the Battle of Pearl Harbor and... It was actually the first shot fired by the U.S. was sinking that. I was sunk by uh, a U.S. Destroyer or frigate, I forget which, but the USS Ward um, saw a periscope headed into Pearl Harbor a couple hours before the air strike, the air attack started, uh, and sunk it with a deck gun. Wow! Looks like we got an enemy hiding in the rock here. Oh, we've seen this guy real early on in the expedition. Yeah, we have. It's interesting that it's hidden that far into the rock like that. Yeah. And then we've got another small-ish cry uh, stalked crinoid sitting here on top of the rock. Looks like with a little snail on top, yeah, too. Yeah, it might have a little, a little associate of some type or, pre or predator. So a viewer online said that little Herc was built in 2000. Push in on that guy if you want and upgraded in 2019 to hit the 6,000 meter mark. Yep, looks like another snail. Okay. Load to do it, Lynette, but you might want to make the next move to the west. Change our rhythm. So we were doing an interaction, I guess, a week or so ago um, with a middle school group and Robert Waters. And, you know, all the kids are really excited and wanting to hear about shipwrecks and interesting things. And... It was so funny because I'm like, yeah, check out this really cool shipwreck. And then uh, Robert Waters comes on and he so, gives yeah. this really sad story about investigating a, a shipwreck off of Guam. And it just like kind of sobered up the entire class. And it was really good because he brought it back home that, yeah, these Bring are really interesting. The but they also usually come with a human, human toll. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know if you got the leash, but can we look at that when you do? Yeah, we're headed that way. Yep. Yeah. But it definitely sobered up the entire yeah. middle school classroom. <laughs> we got a sunset on satellite three. Oh, pretty. Oh yeah, that's a gorgeous view. 
Potato, I can push in there, please. Is that another potato urchin? Yep, looks like another urchin of the sim similar flavor that we just collected. Yeah. And this is one of those hard to tell generic whips. Push in a bit more. It does just look like a little potato is just sitting right there. I'm going to go with Primnoid for now. All right, thank you. We got another bath of pathies here. We Question online, can crinoids regenerate their arms like starfish? Yep. And yes. I've seen a couple of these sort of like ring looking things in the rock. Yeah, I was tripping out on that too. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if that's something or nothing. <laughs> when I was in Big Bend, we saw like um, something similar, but it was fossils. Oh, I have no should, idea. There should not be fossils in these rocks. No. So it's some kind of geological thing. Can you zoom in? Maybe from a critter? Yeah. Just wore away the sediment or something? Yeah. It's the only thing I can think of. Huh. Unless another ROV was here okay. and you no tried way. to use a slur. <laughs> <laughs> I did have that happen once. We were diving a place we thought was unexplored and we tripped and we found a marker left by another project mm -hmm. that we just didn't know they'd been there. And we we're just tooling around, exploring something for the first time, and poof, there's a, <laughs> you know, a bottle lid or a, a bucket lid with a reflector on it. That was in the Gulf of Mexico. The Gulf of Mexico? Yep. Sweet. Oh yeah, I keep meaning to ask Adam about uh, the project they're working on in the north of the Gulf, over on the shelf. Oh yeah, good question. Uh, so Corley, why are there not fossils in these rocks? Um, I mean, it's not like there couldn't be, be fossils in these rocks, it's just not common. There can be fossils in volcanic basalts. Oh, in volcanic basalts? Yeah, no. I mean, it would have to be like very, very particular. Sometimes there are, but it kind of depends what you call a fossil. Um, like, if there is a lava flow that kind of goes on top of organisms, which I think has happened before, but kind of like the magma would just overprint any I'm surprised it doesn't melt them or burn them before. Did you want to keep it moving west, Dan? Um, well, like, I think we can and it, I mean, again, it's kind of depends. Well, I'm looking. Actually, I'm kind of depends. I mean, I've never seen fossils in basalt before. We're both looking at the pill at the moment. Before. Yeah, let's crust. get another one to the west. Here like, we know that it, it can, like, bridge now. crust fossils, but... Can we have really another three zero meters west, please? Thank you. Would we be more likely to see... You uh, ruined our perfect track record. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Would we be more likely to see fossils up in, like, the carbonate area? Like, the very top? Um, yeah, maybe. I mean, yeah, you, I could, you could consider, like, even the carbonate a fossil in itself, like a fossil of the coral reef. Yeah, if you're like ever walking along the coast of, you know, the reefy coast like in Hawaii or whatever, you can definitely find little fossils sitting in the carbonate. And what we what we find down here is just, you know, a hundred million new years newer or whatever. Mm -hmm. But 
uh, is the same kind of same kind of stuff. So yeah, there certainly can be possible fossils up there. I think Nautilus at some point working out here has found an ammonite fossil. Maybe it was Okanus. I know somebody's found like yeah, visible ammonite right. fossils in carbonate caps on these kind of features. Push it there for a step. Looks pretty dead. Okay. I'm still so intrigued by when you go out to like West Texas or in the panhandle like Paladero Canyon, which is the second largest canyon in the U.S., that you'll just see so many fossils out there because it used to be that shallow sea. So you'll have just a plethora of fossils all lining the rock. So we've already come up almost 400 meters in our watch. We're wow. looking at Here's our first Parasocrinus crinoid for the dive. We've been seeing the yellow ones that I can't remember the Latin for, but this is our first red one. And our first Calafaca sponge. And our first bed forms. Eh, oh, this might be getting nice. interesting. Picking up some slightly higher current animals here. At the same time, we're picking up a little signs of current in the sediment. Also getting up, getting higher on the slope. A couple little more coral. What I'm assuming are these primnoid whips we've been seeing down here. Maybe maybe a harbinger of what's to come. Another kebab sponge there too. So, Ren, we have a question come in, and it says, what's the bigger challenge for or for creating an ROV to take it way down deep? Is it the pressure or the extreme temperatures? Well, in my opinion, it would be the pressure. Um, building housings for electronics or other things that can't get wet is is uh, does require a lot of engineering okay. and a lot of expensive components. So all of our one atmosphere volume pressure ho internal vo pressure housings you know they're made out of big expensive chunks of titanium and the junction boxes we have that are not made out of expensive titanium have to be uh, compensated with like a hydraulic system and mineral oil but maybe someone who is a more experienced rov design engineer would disagree with me awesome thank you yeah Temperature in ROVs is interesting because the ocean is almost, some scientist is going to cringe when I say this, but the ocean is almost an infinite heat sink. So you can really do a lot of um, thermal control of electrical components by, you know, heat piping to the, uh, to the ocean or to the metal superstructure of your housing. Thanks, Dan. We got what we needed on that one. Right, yeah. Call it a Pinoa, too.
For those online, we did launch at 4 p. or sorry, at around 2 p.m. Hawaiian time. We are expected to have this be a 20-hour dive, and that would mean that we are going to be exiting sometime around 10 a.m. tomorrow. Can I get down here, Dan? Yep. Coralie, a question from you, or for you, sorry, not from you. Mm -hmm. Although that would be really cool if you're like lobbing yourself questions on, on the uh, chat line. That's there Is the ocean floor more geologically active than dry land? Uh, All right, we're good, thank you. Really yeah, know what is meant by geologically active. Plate tectonics, okay. volcanoes. I mean, the whole world is like all, everything is dominated by plate tectonics. Mm -hmm. Like that's just a fact. Um, the ocean floor, like in the ocean, like in terms of volcanism, like there's a lot more uh, volcanism that's in the ocean, uh, oceanic floor than there is on land. 70% of Earth's volcanoes are in the ocean. Um, but geologically active, it kind of depends, one, where plate tech, like where those tectonic boundaries are. Um, and some of them are in the ocean, but some of them are near or on land. Um, and then where hot spots are, where a lot of hot spots are in the ocean on land. So I guess, in a sense, yes. There's also just a lot more ocean than there is land. Yeah, yeah. And you said there's a much, much higher percentage of underwater volcanoes and volcanism than on land, too. Question online from a viewer. Um, there, they have been watching Okeanos and Nautilus for many years and wonder if it's only Okeanos that lays down scientific devices and sensors or if Nautilus does too. Uh, I mean, it depends on the project. I certainly am not as familiar with Nautilus operations, but when they're working with ONC, I know they're doing things like that. Yeah, so the ONC cruise is not the next one. The next one will be transiting up to British Columbia. But uh, the one after that will be an Ocean Networks Canada cruise, and there will be a lot of sensor right. deployment. Uh, and all these sensors that they're deploying, or most of them, will be linked to the underwater Neptune Observatory. So it's a massively long yeah, push in there, so go by there. Uh, cabled observatory on the bottom where they'll connect and disconnect several sensors for long-term monitoring. Polly Apple gone. All right, thanks. Are you good on the sponge? Yep, we're good on the big sponge. Uh, can you give us a, a snap zoom on the little sponge? Sure, go ahead, Dan. Not a sponge, predatory tunicate. Oh. And it's that same species where you can kind of see those little round dots again. Yep. And then another one of the two, two predatory tunicates and another one of those um, fussy polyp primnoids whips. All right, thanks. That sponge is new for this dive though.
pushing it now. Pushing in both those guys in. This is probably some type of bolosoma. Along with a little C pen thing. Oh. You good? Yep, we're good. Just gonna jump over to the other side here. You can scoot. Can uh, look to yourself a little bit there for me. to look up. <laughs> Roger. So sea star barely hanging in yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> Pushing there, Daryl. Doesn't look like it's too happy. Holding on for dear life. His two arms are just too tired. Just <laughs> stretching. Okay. Uh, Willem from Looks the like we're going to be back on 225, Lynette. All right. Look at that. Back on track. Back on track. This looks like you a want a little time to get out front? Yeah, sure. Okay. Can we drive by on the coral? Yep. Push in on him, please. Hmm. I don't see nodes, but that's got to be a bamboo. Push in a bit more. There are the nodes. Yep, that's our first bamboo. Thank you. Okay. Can you bring your head to the left just a bit for me. You can come left a little bit more. I did. Well, I'm from the Netherlands was saying that uh, they put on this guy as I go by. Daryl. a Star Wars action figure on top of an instrument on the Endeavor node of the Neptune Cabled Observatory. And you can see the whole thing still on C-Tube. Very cool. I saw the Albert Einstein and... Just a little more. A couple of other action figures placed on board. If the ship stopped, can we sample that? Sure. On several of the Looks nodes like over there. We've seen enough of those today. I want to make sure the ID is right. It seems to be the dominant, dominant coral on this feature.
You want to try and slurp him up, or uh, I think you're going to have to cut it. But you can snip and you can snip and slurp if you'd like. But I'd rather not take the whole coral. Rather, right uh, it should rotate now. It'll rotate one here. Copy that. Zoom in there, first out. Science is a particular jar you want us to use next. Six. Okay. Come on now. Or four. It's still having a bit of trouble. Let me see if I can go the other way. Okay, you're getting four. <laughs> Sounds good. They're pushing a bit more on him. Get a good shot of it there. That's better. Sorry, sorry. That falls in, is it? Oh, I did. Okay, I can go away just for a second and see where I am. I'm close. Ah, you can sit back in. What are you doing, Herc? What are you on about battery backup? You good there? Yeah. Can you go wide for us? Uh, then we'll uh, zoom in on the slurp here. Push the porch out a bit for me, would you? Copy that. You good there? Yeah. Zoom in for us, Daryl. Okay. Oh, pity. Okay, T4 is 50. Give it a bit more jam there. The copy. I'm bumping to 75. Roger. Data, is that 140? Roger, roger. Thank you. Give it uh, full speed per minute here. I see what's happening. T4 is at full speed. There it is. Bing. Okay. All right. And while there's a big sand channel over here to your right and while we're stopped, can we go play with push course? Absolutely. Uh, it, seems it goes the other way a little. Yeah, I'm going to... Go one more. I don't know. 
we need to take that. That's good there. You were good? Oh, we might as well go all the way around the flush. Yeah. We need to take that short jar off there and put a long jar. That was a legacy of the... Uh, we tried to do a gauge cam with our jar cam. It didn't quite work out. Okay, where's the deepest part of the sand patch here? The center? <laughs> <laughs> what, do you know the sub-bottom profile on this thing? No. Even, we do have one on Argus, but I can't figure out how to work the thing. <laughs> we use it more like an altimeter. You want to switch back to our rail cam there, please? Yeah, I think dealer's choice, just pick a spot. Try uh, Robert's technique here. You want to hit the uh, sample salvo? See how it might be too steep to do this, but. Roger. Then uh, hit uh, whatever, three on double cam. time I watch ROV pilots do um, a lot of work with the manipulator arm, I appreciate having, naturally having stereoscopic vision, vision and having two eyes because the depth perception control uh, is so difficult with only one camera that basically anywhere the manipulator arm um, is working has to be covered from two different cameras to give you, with different angles to give you depth of field on in three dimensional spaces. Um, and the one or two times they've ever let me play with manipulator arms on different vehicles, it is so difficult um, that it is always, I appreciate the skill of how easy they make this look, having to watch two different cameras with two different angles to infer three dimensional space from two dimensional screens uh, to do, you know, very fine work with a 300 pound metal arm. We just basically fumble around in the dark to <laughs> we get where we need to be. <laughs> well, you make it look like not a lot of fumbling most of the time. So uh, Robert's technique is to take a core off here in the on the side so we can get it back in quicker. I'm gonna try that. I see some inherent logic in that. But the bummer is you can't really see too well, but he kind of does this. You're not real, real worried about the Nope, this is a, we're really interested in the in fauna and the mia fauna and the top five centimeters. Um. Yeah, it's plenty deep. Yeah, I'm getting too greedy here. Look at that. Well, it's not in yet. I don't know if 
that one counts. Yeah. I'll try it. No, it wasn't the best. We lost about half of it, yeah. but I think we got the, the five centimeters on top we're most interested in, so I'll call it a win. I choked there just that bit of time where I missed the first shot that started and that's how quick it falls out. Right. Okay. What number? Sample 141. 141. Thank you, front row. I, right, I think we are ready to set moving uphill again. Right. Uh-oh. That's weird. What's that? Oh, you can put the sled Zeus back there. So I have to break our necks to look at it. Do, uh, do, 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 do. Yeah. Why not? That's what I want there. PC2 over there somewhere? I should let you do that once. PC3, you know, it'll do it better than I do now. I gotta push too many buttons. That's right. <laughs> I'll be driving before you know it. <laughs> Driving's the easy part, fixing. It's the part that always kills me. Okay, I think we're ready to mosey okay. on. Okay, you still want 225? I think so, yeah. It's okay. kind of the, seems to be the uphill, doesn't it? Yep. Bridge nav. Can we have 30 meters 225, please? Thank you. Couple brittle stars here hanging on the rock. Hey, Ren, can you retract the porch the rest of the way when you get a chance? Thank you. Take a quick look at this, please. Yeah, go ahead. There, I'll zoom in. All right, it's got three. Yep. Yeah, come around to get an angle here. Those look like primnoid polyps, I would say. Uh, All right, thanks. You good there? Yep. Okay, I can go away. The other side always looks better in the Argus view. Never is. 
Shout out. Atalanta is intentionally misleading you because you oh, yeah, keep sorry. misnaming her. Atalanta view. Bridge now. Same step, please. Three zero two two five. Thank you. Can we go? Is that too far? It's a sarcocalyx sponge. It's in the Euplectelid family. All right. Thank you. Okay. Go away, thanks. So this is an extremely steep feature looking at uh, the map. It, it's about a 30 degree slope, um, but it, it's like 500 meters at 30 degrees of slope. You were saying that you and you try to do, um, what was it, 15 to 30 degrees? Generally high 20s to 30 is kind of, I like to see at least a couple 25 to 35 degree slope segments on a dive profile, yeah. But that is by no means a guarantee. You know, we had really pretty nice corals last night at mm -hmm. 12 degrees. And then on this 30 degree, it's not that. Yep. Not that great. Like, like I keep saying, we're really pretty good at knowing exactly where corals aren't going to be for the most part. Mm -hmm. But we're not all that good at knowing where they're going to be. I was really hoping the seaside would be all that. I still, I, I have to admit, I'm still pretty optimistic when we've got another, you know, 100 and something meters up that yeah. I, I expect the, so up there. the very, uh, I expect the very top of the wall face before we transition onto the plateau. I'm still very optimistic that should be um, cool. Yeah. Can we good zoom here. cup coral? That's All probably right. good, thanks. Quick zoom there while we're looking at it. Yep, let's look for the egg case. Oh, oh, shocking, egg case. Is. But what else is there? Is that a snail? Um. Yeah. Maybe we stop the ship. We might want to take a minute to look at that. Bridge now. Right. See if I can get planted here. Uh, can uh, we hold position here, please? Thank you. 
Is it hatching? Uh, I'm not going to say that out loud yet. <laughs> <laughs> but my mind, my mind may have gone there for a minute. Yes. Mine did. Okay. Pulls it. tell me neither can we get a different angle I can try uh, go ahead for a second or just zoom out a little bit uh, well, maybe can, a little more can you see anything on the still cam see what I Not I really. closer, we're kind of like down pointing up at it but huh and that's either a brittle star sitting right on top of it, or that's a baby octopus. Holy macaroni. I think it might be a brittle star. I, think it, I mean, that's the more likely. Wow. That's the more likely scenario is a brittle star. But I'm still holding out hope. Yeah. Kind of waited on. It's kind of hard to that's tell. That's where our ship stopped. I get a different DSC. Uh, zoom in there for us, Daryl. I don't know if that's any better. I don't want to say anything and ruin it. Wrong side of the tree. Mm -hmm. Try uh, one more time on the other side. Okay, zoom in there for us. No, that's not any better. Afraid I'm going to blow it out if I come side hill to it, but I'll try it. It looks like a kind of weird brittle star, but I feel like need a manip cam. Yeah, I don't, I don't. Oh, oh you know what it is? It's an isopod. Oh. It's an isopod sitting on the back of the egg. <coughs> That's what it is. Think that it could possibly be eating it? Totally, possible. Yeah. Or it could just hanging out there. I don't know, but. Um, but yeah, I can clearly see it. That's either an isopod or some kind of small polychaete. All right. Thank okay. you. Well. I was really excited there for a second that that was going to be yeah. where we were going to actually I could catch see it one. in everybody's, like, like oh, my God. That? that was great. Like, that was so cool. I love that no one wanted to say it, but we were all thinking it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> hopeful. Everyone was very hopeful. But what would we do if it, it was hatching? We'd have to we'd stay there for it. like hours. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that would be so we neat. would just sit there and watch it. That would be the highlight of the year. Mm -hmm. Has anyone ever seen a... I believe a group on, at Woods Hole faster. collected one and had it hatch um, in the lab. Oh, wow. After they got it on the surface. I don't remember if they encouraged it to hatch. Okay. Like cut the egg and then a, 
a one swim out, but they did have uh, a newly hatched Dumbo for alive in the lab on the ship for a little bit. I remember seeing that online. That's cool. But not one in the wild has been captured. No, hatching not that I'm aware of, no. You ready to continue 225? Sure. Bridge now. You want to, uh, you can bring your head back to 225, too. I'll come can we move three left. zero meters, 225, please? Thank you. Quick flyby zoom there before my dust storm gets it. All right, that's good, thanks. Go away. Can you change uh, to the port rail cam too while you get a chance? Thank you. More of a Niskin cam. But For those viewing on YouTube or even on NautilusLive.org, if you go to nautiluslive.org, on the right-hand side of the screen, you will be able to see uh, the depth of Hercules, of Atalanta, and the temperature. Should, um, Robert's going to be up here in seven minutes. I plan for a static chaos change. Okay. That's a big enemy. Oh. You can even see it on Atlanta, at Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a big anemone. Yeah. I love the little wavy line of its tentacles. Oh, oh, great. That's a great shot. All right. That's, uh, that's good for us. I found it in the guide, and it just says act an area. <laughs> get a helpful. good DSC, or am I too close? Like yeah, no, we're getting, getting good stuff. I got some good ones. Yeah, I got some great stuff. I wasn't watching. Brian, how painful do you think the uh, these deep sea anemones sting would be compared to their shallow water cousins? Don't really know. I would. Can you uh, put the bubble cam back on? Yeah, uh, I, don't, just I don't really have a. Can't just think of a two. line of logic on whether it would be stronger or weaker here. Is there a way that you can test out the strength of a of a nematocyst without like a human person sticking their finger in there? I would imagine so. I don't. I don't actually know enough about the biochemistry of the stinging substance, but. Assuming that has been identified and isolated in the lab, I'm sure you could probably just get a an idea of how much of that is that compound is present in a cell or in a you know a known vo known volume and kind of infer how stingy it would be. But that kind of work requires a microscope, so yeah, yeah.
You want to just let this move run out then? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Oops, ship's not moving. In the yeah. If you guys are ending a move, can we look at this little thing down here? I'm not sure. It might sure. just be trash. I can't tell. Go ahead, Dara. Push in there. Good there. Uh, give me just a second if you don't mind. Roger. All right, I think I'm good. Thanks. That's an anthopithelum, which is not the one that Steve wants another sample of. What was it? I think that's anthopithelum. Is that the first time we've seen that one? Uh, I don't think it's the first, but we have not seen a lot of them. So as we moved back in, or moved into this sandier sediment with the oh. ripples, we have lost a lot of the bioturbators. Got a couple. Here's an urchin, and it's a little zigzag or, you know, mowing the grass pattern here. Um, but when we were in the finer sediments further downslope, we had a lot more uh, sediment eaters. Uh, fly by on the urchin. Please. Yep. Fly by zoom. This is more of that standard pancake urchin type thing that we collected um, the other night as a reference for the laser dive bot. However, here's something we haven't seen yet. Look at, uh, where'd my stylus go? These are new. What are those? Brachiopods. Uh, go wide for a second for me. Miles I know that name, but away. what exactly is a brachiopod again? Um, pod. Oh, okay, they're a type of um, a mollusk. Yep. If I remember correctly, they're a basal outgroup to the bivalves. They date back 550 million years ago. And... Came in a little too fast there. Can uh, zoom in through the dust there, can you? Yep, they sealed up. Um, oh, that's okay. But yep, I think those are the first ones we've seen of those this expedition. Thank you. So they're not actually a mollusk, but so like you said, soft. they're their own phylum. They're relatively rare in today's oceans and seas. Interesting. Look up just a little for us, please. Yeah. That's good. It's 
so cool. I'm not sure, uh, not quite sure who to throw this question out to, but why don't we have active hydrophones working during dives? Because the hydraulics on the vehicle would just drown them out. We wouldn't be able to hear anything over the sound of the thrusters in the hydraulic system on Herc. We are getting ready for our watch change, so it's going to be a little bit of dead air for the next couple of minutes, most likely. Video change. Uh, it's a uh, pilot station now. Thanks, everyone. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? Good evening to everybody tuning in, 8 to 12, signing in.
to turn my volume up again. Five by five, Bob. Uh, I think we're recovering at 10 tomorrow. How's it going up there? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. It exists. Hello, everyone. How's everybody feeling? Good. Excellent. Yeah. Good. Nice. Let's go. Nominal. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, rats. What? Oh, you forgot your keys? No snacks? <laughs> you can hotwire this thing. <laughs> yeah. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Guess we're not going anywhere. I got it if you want, Robert. I can take the wheel. You get in here? <laughs> <laughs> Guess we're not going anywhere. Where are you opening? No, I'll save this next. Well, science, yes. I hear that we are going uh, up this little ridge here. Yeah. And uh, we're hoping for some excitement when we get to the top. Yeah, that sounds great. And then we'll head over to, to these waypoints, but we'll get here first. Yeah, and don't worry about going all the way to two. We just want to kind of <laughs> get to the edge. Okay. I won't worry. Okay, well, when uh, Robert's ready, we will get going. Unless there's anything you want to do here? Nope. Robert gave nope. the uh, onward hand. No thumbs up, though. Bridge, Nev. The let's go hand. Let's. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Hello, uh, three zero meters, two two five, please. Two forty five. Wow, bridge is really quiet today. Yeah, sorry, I'll fix that. Oh, okay. Thanks. Wow, my bank account is not full enough. I was gonna wait and see if Dave was gonna fix that too. <laughs> 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 it's worth a shot. Yeah, give me your uh, account number and your social security number. I'll take care of that for you. Wait a second. Make sure you're on SBO when you do it. Yeah. Because I got a guy in Africa that's ready to send me some money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Brent. <laughs> okay. So we are heading 225 ROV. I guess the other watch was cruising along. And they just recently started slowing down, so doesn't bode well for our, uh, no our timing. <laughs> no boating, Roger. <laughs> Low boating. Slow Hot boating? boating? Hot boating. Hot boating. <laughs> Lukewarm boating. So did they do that just in anticipation of us coming on? <laughs> yeah, you know, like too the fast. The can't take it. <laughs> Crinoid. It's it's actually over here now. Oh, I believe you. It's also a holotherian, but you can't see it. Y'all see those acorn worms they saw earlier? Yeah, yeah, oh, those were so cool. I heard that you ran up here. I did not run up. No, I was down. Worms. I saw them on the screen down there. I did not run. But that was crazy <laughs> that we me. we talked about them yesterday, I think, and then. Boom. It was like the, the hamburgers. Yeah. yeah it's like and, a, it's and I'm still <laughs> waiting for the tacos. Come on, Jules. Keep wishing for tacos. <laughs> Without context, oh someone is like, acorn it. worms. They're like the hamburgers. <laughs> and we're like, what? <laughs> but there were like seven acorn worms, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think so. I heard that you ran up. Who, cause me? You, because you, you wanted to be here for them. Uh, after manifesting them. Oh, I actually did come up. Yeah, Because see? I was... Uh, relieving Brian for dinner. 
Oh, uh, so there is a purpose to you being here. I thought you were just overexcited about the acorn. Uh, <laughs> I was sitting uh, next to Adam, and I'll have you know that there was ice cream involved, and Adam wasn't <laughs> going anywhere. <laughs> I know. It took me a yeah. long time. I felt really bad. <laughs> but that was some very good and interesting ice cream. It was very good there and was, interesting. Uh, the chocolate and the honeydew? The yeah, honeydew, honeydew mochi. Mochi? Did yeah. you do honeydew mochi? mochi? Did you feel the little things in the honeydew? Yeah. Oh, what? No. The mochi? What? I didn't get some. I'm not a mochi fan. Huh. What? <laughs> it's kind of benign. How can you not be a mochi yeah. fan? Yeah, benign. We're going to have to veto you on this one. <laughs> the chocolate was really good. Wait, so y'all didn't good. notice the bits? Yeah. What no. Bits? They're delicious. I, kinda, I liked That's how concatenated it was. Huh? Concatenated. What? Concatenated. <laughs> I like how concatenated Scientific it was. Scientific word of the day. Uh, uh, concatenate is the, <laughs> the word that I organically thought of, and it's also the Merriam-Webster uh -huh. word of the day. Oh. Just organically thought of. Oh, it's to link together. Oh, you mean when you put the chocolate and the honeydew, yeah. and you concatenate it. Yes. yes. Sure. A whole gamut of Aye, ice cream tripod. options. Fish. With eyes. We can keep circling, but we can't get to it. No, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> Ship's moving. I'm actually going to put it in the Can you draw the rings like the uh, Olympics? Oh, boy. Please. Do, 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 do. Uh, That's the let's just add three zero <laughs> meters to the step, please. Two, two, five. So apparently, if you're just tuning in, the slope has looked a lot like this for the whole... Uh, dive so far. We th I was sure it was going to have a bunch of little steps in it, but it's been very kind of smooth and flat the whole way up. Neat. Fascinating, you say? <laughs> <laughs> very fascinating. What? Well, um, it's a 12. Are we ready? We have our viewers um, tuning in uh, for our introductions. Let me know. We, we good? We need a question, uh, Annie. Yes, yes, I have a question. <laughs> okay. Um, so we have our introductions chat and a follow-up question. If you were to choose any superpower, which superpower would you choose to have? Mm, that's a great question. And I have actually already prepared a 45-minute <laughs> <laughs> statement about what the correct answer is. Can I get that power deck, a power uh, point deck ready for you? <laughs> yeah, right. can't have the, we can't choose the same <laughs> one. Next slide. Oh, you can't choose the next one? Okay. Or the same one? I'm yeah. going first. Okay. Uh, is that a crazy gorge over there? Yeah. Looks like it. Cool. All right. So I'm Adam Sewell. I'm a, a professor at University of Rhode Island Graduate School of Oceanography. Uh, my research is in submarine volcanism. Uh, I'm also the director of the Ocean Exploration Cooperative Institute, which is a consortia of universities and, and organizations that work with uh, the NOAA Office of Ocean Exploration to explore the oceans uh, in the US EEZ and develop new technologies to help do that and uh, engage with and educate next generation of ocean explorers. Originally from Olympia, Washington, uh, currently reside Cape Cod, Massachusetts, and the superpower, I think it's really, it's pretty easy, and I'm going to go with flight. Ooh. Mm. Oh. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Flying. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Jules. I'm from Boston, Massachusetts. Actually, that's a lie. I'm from Massachusetts, but I'm not from Boston. <laughs> I live in Boston now. <laughs> um, I work at the Museum of Comparative Zoology. I am a biologist on the 8 to 12 watch. And I would want to be able to breathe underwater. Oh, oh damn. Oh. I'm <laughs> we can repeat, right? <laughs> no, we <laughs> cannot repeat, but there's a take. ton of good ones left. <laughs> OK. Everyone was going to say I just don't want to. It's really everybody. expensive <laughs> to get scuba certified. Right, no, right. Dude, that's right. And like. I'll have all the extra money from not having to buy plane tickets. That's true. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, well, hi everyone. My name is Paula Santiago. And right now, I don't have a specific power, but I will think about <laughs> any superpower that I want. <laughs> so I'll take a rain check on that question. Ooh. I am uh, this watch data logger and this uh, expedition science intern. And I am from Puerto Rico and I work in coral restoration efforts. I am a marine biologist. And yes, I will pass the introduction to someone else while I think of <laughs> what? Of an answer for the question. You're gonna lose it out on some good. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Hurry. All right. Well, hello everyone. My name is Annie Halleck. I am this watches uh, science communication fellow. This is my first year sailing on the Nautilus. I am from Pongo Pongo, American Samoa. Um, I am a local educator back home. I teach marine science and biology. My superpower would be, I would have to You're go not with. To us, I would have Sorry, to go Annie. with um, healing. No, Aww, yeah, that's healing. Such a nice one. That's really Annie. nice. Game over. Annie wins. Wait, <laughs> no. Everyone who chose the stupid selfish powers. Wait, but how You're would Annie person. get around? I would carry her <laughs> flying. <laughs> healing. I would do okay. Let's go front row. Gosh. Dave gets to start. <laughs> Super oh, thank zoom. you. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> Super Dave, that's me. Uh, Dave Robertson, lead video engineer on this expedition and sitting in the video chair for 8 to 12. Uh, trying to make the cameras uh, look good here and zoom in and zooming in on stuff. Uh, I've spent the majority of my career living in uh, Anchorage, Alaska. I've traveled all over the state of Alaska. If you have questions about the state of Alaska, ask away. Superpower. Uh, my favorite superhero uh, of all time, uh, and I was a comic kid and uh, still am, uh, is The Flash. Oh. oh super that's speed. A good, but yeah, super speed. Super speed is, that's is a good one. Super speed encompasses a whole lot of things uh, in that you can fly and you can vibrate your molecules to run through walls, and you can... Uh, <laughs> specific. And you, there's all kinds of things you can do with this. You can run across water. Dave, yeah, that's true. Water. Can you super zoom? <laughs> you don't have to take super any zoom. more flights. There, see that? So fast, you didn't even didn't see Didn't even see it. it. <laughs> and I stopped in the middle to catch a focus. And back up. That's, that's what super speed's all about. Wow. Oh, Annie, I have one. Okay. Thank you, Dave. Go ahead. Okay, Paolo. Okay. Talk to animals. Oh, they will have so okay. Much oh to that's okay, that's a good, good one. one. Do we really want to know what the Cuscales are thinking? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not I want to know reader. what's going on in their heads. Mm -hmm. They're like, okay, oh, let's that go, was Mike. A <laughs> uh, hello, uh, my name is Mike Burns. I am the Atalanta pilot for today at the shift. Um, currently residing in Glassboro, New Jersey. Woo! Glassboro! New Jersey! <laughs> <laughs> Love New Jersey! So good. Never been to New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Never been to New Jersey, but so good. Uh, and my superpower that I would pick would probably be teleportation. Oh, that is Ooh. a good one. Oh, so, that's a good one. Yeah, just transport to those places instead of having to fly. Right. So <laughs> less oh, less yeah. wear and tear. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get any good air photos <laughs> on the way. <laughs> See that thing there? Mm. Soft sponge. Zoom in, dude. Robert thinks he's getting away with not going because yeah, he's working. Sponge uh, list. <laughs> <laughs> Robert Waters, I'm a third pilot. Sponge. <laughs> he sounds unsure. No, I got you all beat. Um, okay, what you got? I'm going to be a shapeshifter. Uh, I was going to say Enthodicella, but it has nice. a flat, larger stock. Yeah, fat stock and a nice round. What's what the red thing? thing yeah, what is that red thing on there? A little anemone? I don't know. Do we need to Let's get closer? Yep. Microscope mode. That's full zoom. We, we had microscope mode installed and took it off. We did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's hyalinema. No, because it's stalked, yeah. Well, hyalinema can be... Oh, can be stalked? Yeah. 
Okay. But it doesn't. Ah, mm. uh, actually, this might be hyalinema. See that our tilt is mighty slow today. Uh, everything here is <laughs> like white and hard to see. Samantha, when you're ready. Sure. <laughs> I'm thinking Avoiding really hard over here. <laughs> Avoiding the superpower question. Yeah, and you got to be, now it's got to be like for the good of humanity. As I know, well. right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> we Actually, don't I have any invisibility yet. Boom. Well, Identified. that was going to be mine, but I'm for the side I had things? reasons. Hold on. Okay, get there. Get there. <laughs> Samantha, go on the journey. <laughs> I'll let this happen first. This one's Polisoma. Bolosoma, Roger. What's the little uh, critter on it? Anemone? Anemone. The oh, yeah, anemone. I saw it two seconds Aww. ago. Bolosoma. Yeah, that one looks like the one that the crabs have been using, too. Goes through. Oh, yeah, now you can kind of see the... Yeah, from above it looks like it was completely Roundy. surrounded. Yep. Cylindrical. Cylindrical. All right, we got it. Spherical. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, Samantha. Okay, Samantha Wishnack, Navigator on the H12 from Salinas, California. And I was going to say invisibility. Good. Spoiler say from it. Adam, but oh. my two prong reason for it was one, because it would be cool to be able to sneak into places I shouldn't be. And two, um, I could also help people who are in sticky situations. Mm -hmm. And seemingly alone, but I'm actually there. Okay, but Ooh. this is the question. Dun dun dun. Do you gotta? Do you have to be naked? <laughs> or do you make clothes invisible? You. Can. That's a good point. Have you ever heard of the invisibility cloak situation? There we go. Charu. Yeah. So invisibility? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. But with clothes and visibility too, I think. It's the caveat. Correct. Full of, I can make anything invisible by touching it. Oh, okay. So I can okay. also take other better, people with better. me or like objects. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's great. Why don't we? So all you just have an invisibility cloak. You don't actually have a superpower. No, I have a power, but I also could like her power cloak is other people. Owning yeah. the cloak. Uh -oh. <laughs> no, the power is the power, and whatever I touch becomes an invisibility. So the maybe we should make invisible. a pact that if we're touching any of the people on our watch, they can have our power too. How about what? We don't oh, touch other people on our watch. <laughs> if you would like to share your power, <laughs> maybe you could just choose without touching High them. fives only. Uh, High fives only, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, team. I think. Um, for everybody tuning in online, check out nautiluslive.org for our amazing highlights. We will be posting more highlights from our dives um, in the days or in the week to come. Uh, thanks for sticking with us. Um, our time on, well, we launched around 2.30, correct? Um, expected dive duration about 20 hours. We are a max depth at 24.36 meters. We hope to recover tomorrow at 10 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time. If you have any questions, uh, send them in. Our team would be happy to answer them for you. We even have a good, we already have a superhero team name, Chaos Crew. Right, yeah. Awesome. That's what uh, chat says. Welcome back, Club Chaos. Uh, <laughs> Chaos. Or is that to call you Team Triflap? I want to see more acorn worms. Yeah. Cool. That would be really cool to see. So, But no one had that as their superpower. It was manifesting acorn animals. Acorn worms. You mean Professor <laughs> Chaos? <laughs> yeah. I think that used to be a sponge. Yeah, yeah. oh. We even have a battle cry. Let's go. <laughs> True. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to attack Sumin Day. <laughs> Chaos crew assemble. Bella, <laughs> find out what those Let's bugs go. are thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I have to locate them first from the echolocation. Wow. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll go get them. I'm on my way. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Jules just free dives a thousand meters. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's a part of my power is I can, I can go all the way down. That is the like a shrimp. <laughs> like a shrimp. That I is the like, the superhero movie conceit is <laughs> that like the bad guy 
happens to live at the bottom of a, a well, so only <laughs> Jules can stop. A well. I don't know. You need, like, there's there's always the stuff around to yeah. make your power work. Like in The Incredibles, isn't there, like, a lair and a cave? And you have to go underwater, <laughs> or like, was that this something I made up just now? Uh, I like, mean, there are a lot of villains like in the ocean too, right? Yeah, yeah there's secret ocean layers inside, layer. inside volcanoes. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I would definitely come in handy in those situations. Yeah, probably in that mystery hole yesterday, if we had gotten a little closer. Yeah. Well, who's to say we didn't? Dave might have super zoomed in it, oh. and then no one saw it. <laughs> True. Or I could have just True. teleported, teleported. It to it <laughs> and saw it and said, nah, Maybe we're we've good. always been in the mystery hole. Mm. Maybe we're still in the mystery hole. Is that Robert? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shapeshifter? <laughs> <There's, uh, laughs> <there's, uh, laughs> oh no. <laughs> I think this is a record, y'all. We're 19 minutes in. And we're we're falling, apart falling apart <laughs> earlier and earlier. Really? Every I day. think we're peaking. <laughs> Yeah, it depends on how you look at it. And if you have to listen to us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so science. Speaking of science, what Keep are going. we... Uh, oh, <laughs> sorry. I don't have are the superpower we of foresight. Are there any uh, specific corals or sponges we're looking for today and or rocks? So we have not sampled a rock on this entire dive. Oh my goodness. Everything, How are you feeling? Well, I'm so worried. Yeah. But not really. Okay. Everything shaky. has been cemented in place. Um, and I think the hope is that when we get up towards the rim of this, so people should know that we are on the east side of this uh, seamount. Right. This is a probably the first dive we've done on the east side of a seamount and this is kind of right in the thick of the dominant current flow for the region so the notion is when we get to the top of this we should be see some exciting high density kind of coral and sponge areas but also maybe some rocks to sample so we're just on the lookout for What's in this area? Bridge, More importantly, nap. corals and sponges, though, obviously. Let's add another three zero meters to the step 225. That's a dead, dead. Oh, but oh, it Walteria. Well, you don't think it's Walteria? I don't know what it was. <laughs> I can't see it well enough. Oh yeah, it could have been. Hmm. Hard to say. And some something with zoanthids. Yep. I was joking about the rocks, by the way. Geology rocks. I didn't hear what you said. Oh, I you were like and some rocks too and I was like, but mostly corals though, obviously. Oh no. Yeah. Uh, that kinda hurts. But geology is really cool also. Oh, wow, close up on a Xenophyre floor. This is cool. It's a little shelf. Elf on the shelf. We do have questions. Um, so, what causes, uh, let's say, corals um, to die underwater? Cats um, as plants, but corals. Let's go with corals. Yeah, I mean, things die for a number of reasons. Uh, coral, coral livery is certainly a thing. Um, well, you better explain what that is, because that was a new <laughs> word for me. Uh, coral livery is basically like predation on corals, mm. um, something eating a coral. So sea stars and urchins will sometimes attach to a coral and eat them. Um, other things use the corals for like habitat, 
and to like get into the flow, which is really important for filter feeders because food is flowing through the water. Um, and so sometimes they'll sort of like take over the coral skeleton, like zoanthids or um, uh, hydroids, which have stinging cells. Oh, it's a branch coral. Um, and that can eventually Someday. kill the corals. But right. corals live for a very long time in the deep sea. They can live thousands of years. Right. Um, they're also extremely slow growing. They're also stuck in one place, so if the flow, the currents change and... Yeah, nutrient limitation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there is concern that... Well, you got what this is? This Black is a coral. primnoid. Oh, yeah? Um, there is concern that ocean acidification and increasing temperatures will, like, begin to restrict the habitat of these corals because they're used to, like, very, very cold, very deep, limited sunlight habitats. They're especially adapted to the deep sea, so that could potentially harm them. Thank you. Um, and then we do have a, this is, um, in regards to our engineers. Let me see. Is there ever a need for software engineers for the type of work we do on board, or is it mostly mechanical engineers? Oh, there's definitely a need for software engineers. Right, right. Yeah. It's like, that's what makes the vehicle run. And, the, and not to mention the huge amounts of data that it kind of collects and produces and how you get that to the people who need it or, or yeah. analyze it and interpret it. Um, you know, maybe with this vehicle, it's kind of manually run, but right. there's like a lot of autonomy within it still and more vehicles that are, you know, fully autonomous. Software engineers, we love them. Oh, this includes, um, a shout out to Panama. Um, so this includes a systems engineer, correct? Yeah, systems okay. engineer. Now maybe I don't fully know what a systems engineer, but that would seems like someone who understands all the engineering right. yeah. parts right, of it. Right. And you know, if you're kind of managing one of these vehicles or building a new vehicle, that kind of that kind of skill set is super valuable. Yeah, every cruise sails with a data engineer, at least one. Um, right. And data engineers can have a background in software engineering and networking systems in data science and cybersecurity. It's kind of everyone part of the, as part of the DE team have diverse paths to get there. But yeah, everyone's got a little bit of software engineering experience and skills. <laughs> I knew you'd be back. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, that's actually a good example of one of the career pages that we have on the, the Nautilus Live website. Right. If you click team, you can see who's currently on the ship, uh, but also the different roles on board and get an idea of the background of folks coming out in that role and the kind of skills and responsibilities they have while sailing. Um, and then it also highlights some of the actual people in those roles and their unique paths to being at sea in that role. Thank you. And that's what's really um, great about just um, what I've seen on the Nautilus. It's we're a crew made of we're made of 50 people. There's 50 people on board, um, but we all have different career paths. We have educators, geologists, biologists, video engineers, pilots, the captain, first mate, chefs, stewards. Um, different careers all make this one team that makes ocean exploration possible chat so head on over to nautiluslive.org uh, for more information we are at how many meters are we uh, 19 1900 1940 uh, 1940 meters chat got a wall coming up yes Oh, what's this? See over is this a jelly or shrimp? Mm -hmm. I was hoping it was a uh, sea dandelion. They've what? been on the brain. What? Kind of like. Maybe we'll see some more biology soon. Bridge, no? 
So another three zero meters, two two five. Looks like a percentage. A percentage of a halosaur. False alarm. Never <laughs> mind. <laughs> there is a fish just ahead. Looks like a halosaur. Just kind of hanging out, going with the flow. Paula, what do corals think about? <laughs> what do corals think about? <laughs> yeah. Can you ask? Nom, yeah. Nom, nom, <laughs> nom, nom, nom. Is it in deep? They're too far away. They're like whispering right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, maybe when we're closer. Okay, yeah. Or who has the teletransportation? It's to take us there. Is this a halosaur? Yes. Look at the marks. Hmm. Yeah, and that scoop nose. Right. <laughs> Is it flowing backwards? <laughs> nice. All right. Oh, that's a good one. Do we have any sampling objectives for rocks, corals? Yes. Yeah, I think uh, we're definitely for rocks. Mm -hmm. For corals, we'll have to see kind of what the dominant species are Just and if we see anything that's uh, unusual. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. So I know we've been um, we've been requesting like we've gotten we've gotten rock samples like each dive, correct? Mm -hmm. So will you be comparing at the end of the cruise, comparing all those rocks from different dives? Um, yeah, possibly. I mean, there. I think that uh, some people will be very interested in certain kinds of rocks. So the volcanic rocks will get compared, but. Mm -hmm. Um, I think you want to, <laughs> yeah, you want to mute for that. <laughs> Is that mochi balls? <laughs> I stand by chat. Scientists eat snacks too. Chat's wondering what we're eating. I had you on camera the whole time, so. It was pretty obvious. What's it, what's it called? What's that stuff? They're mochi balls, so they're Ooh. mochi flour around peanuts with some seaweed and sesame seeds on them. You have nice. some really odd snacks. Delicious. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, that was great. Uh, yeah, they're, well, these are Japanese style rice crackers, but they're from um, Don Quixote, which is the, oh. my favorite grocery store. Yeah. Boy, not a sponsor, mm -hmm. but we consider it. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Still not a sponsor. Lots of good snacks. If anyone wants more, let me know. How's our move look? Moves good. Let's keep them moving. Keep them moving. We got seven meters left. I'm going to add another one in now. Yeah. She distracted Bridge us back. with snacks. <laughs> <laughs> Let's add three zero meters to this step. Two, two, five. Oof. Is there a reason why we're not, why we're not seeing um, as much life? In our previous dive, um, current? 
I, current flow? Could be I affected? don't think it's current. I think okay. could be depth. You know, we've right. seen tend to see have seen the most density around kind of the sixteen hundred meter right. range. Right. Yeah, they're also, um, this is very sandy, um, so there's not a whole lot of hard surfaces for things to grow on. Um, I've also tended to notice that there's a little more hey. biodiversity um, as we move upslope. So I don't know if that's for certain, but there are people interested in associations between um, coral and sponges and uh, geological um, formations. Oh, there's a rock that looked like something else for a moment. A distinct lack of botryoidal texture through here. What does that mean, Adam? That's something we've been seeing a lot. It's a texture that forms in this iron manganese crust where it looks really lumpy, like a bunch of grapes. And that's, I think it's Botrius was the Greek for a bunch of grapes. Can we oh. zoom on this, please? You mean the rock or the coral? Um, I'm in the coral. Oh. Usually. <laughs> this looks like a bamboo. Yeah. Uh, Lepidisis. Noted. Thank you. Mm -hmm. A couple tunicates in the back there. All I right need to there. see the sclerites. <laughs> The overhang situation here. We got to spot that. Okay. 